from New York City. This is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins, and here with me is my guest co-host, Donna Hanover of Arts in the City on CUNY TV. Salute to the Brave is a play by Noel Coward that was never, ever performed remarkably, but they're going to premiere it on November 13th in New York City at the Actors Company Theater, and we're going to talk about it this week. Here with us is Scott Allen Evans, the Executive Artistic Director of TACT, yes. as you call it. Jeffrey Johnson, who was a colleague of Noel Coward's, a, also a renowned casting director, but you were a colleague of Noel Coward's when you were, were a director, right. yes. That's right. And also is now on the advising executive board of the Noel Coward Foundation. Trustee. Trustee. You're <laughs> very involved with the Noel Coward Foundation. And we have one of the most eminent Cowardian, Cowardian actresses of the day, Christine <laughs> Nielsen. Welcome back. Christine was in Present Laughter last season with Kevin Klein. Why don't I come here at once? What on earth is the matter? Have you or have you not seen me overact? Frequently. <laughs> and she's been in a lot of other great stuff, and she's going to be in Salute to the Brave at the TAC Theater Company on November 13th. You're playing a, a, a superficial American, right? Yeah. Well, which will be very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I've started work now, <laughs> my research. <laughs> so, so, Scott, why was this play never produced? Well, it's a, it's a fascinating story. Um, as you may know, Coward, and Jeffrey can talk about this, yes. but Coward was a, 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 an official espionage spy for the British government during the war World and II, yeah. was, uh, did a lot of uh, intelligence gathering as he traveled around the world. Um, and he was very pro, obviously pro-Britain, and uh, wanted to do something to help encourage America to enter the war because at that time there was huge isolationism. Lindbergh, uh, a lot uh, of art. And a lot of resistance for, yeah. new, uh, for America to Yes, to very day who is not here, the, the eminent Coward scholar who found this play right. among the papers of Noel Coward, told me, he said, well, you know, Errol Flynn was a Nazi sympathizer. That's right. But <laughs> and Cary Grant oh, was a spy. I never knew that. Evidently. For the Nazis? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this play uh, was discovered in a drawer, and uh, Tact has a history of looking at these forgotten plays, and actually we have done several of Noel Coward's lesser known works. We did the American premiere of a play called Long Island Sound in 2002, and we've done several Coward plays. So Barry brought it to our attention, and uh, you know, I had that experience where I read it last summer, and you know, it's a fascinating play. But then when I read it again after last November, and everything changed, it was imperative that we do this play. It is so incredibly prescient and suddenly relevant in all sorts of interesting ways. But why, why after November would this play be more present? Well, that's a very loaded question. Susan. It certainly is. Thank you very much for that. No, I think it's just that uh, nativism is a very dangerous uh, uh, question right now in this time versus nationalism versus patriotism. And I think it's finding that uh, uh, what Noel Coward has done with great wit and uh, with hopefully some laughs on the way to answering that question of what is really, really important, uh, which I think is much more to be nationalistic and patriot and also be an open society. This is very understanding. This is such a gracious approach to changing a country's attitude about entering a war. Right. Absolutely. Right. What's, right. what's fascinating about it, too, is that because he was such an amazing writer, it's so subtle. And so there's no, there's no heavy handedness in it, as Christine was saying. It's, it's a very kind of, um, kind of a beautiful way of kind of convincing someone in a, in, by not taking a direct approach. He, he's trying to con cajole these isolationist Americans in the late 30s yes. into taking some this action. problem seriously. Yeah, exactly. Right. And also yeah. to take our ally, which was, was Great Britain, uh, seriously. And, and they are one of our closest allies, and it is good to acknowledge that right, right. That, they're, that they help us and we help them, and it's good to be the good friend in bad times and good times. And the Nazis were threatening after Britain coming over here. I think the, the reason that it didn't get on was that after Noel Coward finished the play, this attack on Pearl Harbor. Right, right. Immediately followed it. So yeah, that was it. The, the, the ink, drawer. Yeah, the ink wasn't dry, really. And <laughs> yeah. the harbor happened, and the need was gone. 
but uh, that's absolutely right. And the play takes place in September of 1940, which is just when the Blitz started. <laughs> and one of the main characters, uh, Layla, who comes to visit Christine's character, Norma, in Connecticut, um, escapes the bombing. And the pr through the process of the play, her kind of her eyes are kind of the scales fall from her eyes, and she realizes the values she had before that are kind of represented here in Connecticut are not the values that matter anymore. Mm. And that's what's so kind of brilliant about that. And, and and what is so current? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now, Jeffrey, you knew Noel Coward. Yes. Did he, what, do, you, do you think he had any regret about these plays of his that didn't get on, that, like this one, Salute to the Brave? I, I really don't think so. I think he just, he kept going, certainly before I knew him and worked with him. Yes. Because that was a bit later. I'm a little... You're a bit younger. A bit younger, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I almost had it wrong there. But uh, the thing about uh, being around Noel when I worked for him is I, uh, I was very seldom alone with him. There are a lot of questions now, today, I wish I had asked him. Things about his youth and how he started and about the early days with the vortex, which really put him on the map. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did have a chance once. I was alone with him for an hour in Switzerland. I was visiting his home in Switzerland, and he, uh, I asked him some questions about his writing and how he, you know, when he was really writing, because when, when uh, this incident, when I was talking to him, he wasn't writing so much. It was in his later years. But uh, uh, he said he had a, a schedule. He would uh, wake up in the morning early, seven o'clock. He would uh, have coffee brought to him. That's all he had. Uh, then he'd get, after the coffee, he'd get out of bed, he'd go into his workroom, he'd sit, and he started out writing in longhand. Very, very small longhand. Uh, uh, some of the, the manuscripts which we have in the Noel Coward archive, which is part of the Noel Coward Foundation, uh, uh, you look at this teeny, weeny. I mean, <laughs> I saw the original script for Hay Fever, which is one of his most popular plays, as you know. And uh, I couldn't believe how small the <laughs> handwriting was. And it was in pencil. And it was as if it had been written yesterday. Why are people going to want to see this play, in addition to supporting yes, the organization? Tech, right. yes. What are they going right. to come away with? Are they going to have laughed all night? What, what it's gonna be like, what's it going to be like for the viewer? I hope it's that. I hope you start laughing. And then I hope you start thinking. That's right. That's, that's what I'd that's, say. That's, I, I feel like that's the it, character I think. of Norma, it was so fascinating to me because it's the person with the blinders on. They have all the right, they say all the right things and they do all the right committees and they do all the, but they're not really sacrificing anything. And so it's fascinating to learn um, to get bigger than yourself. You know, this woman you discover, you know, is probably supremely self-centered which I think in many ways America is. You know, we're very, we're very uh, egocentric. I yes. think it's like our country, let's right. make it great again. I, I like think the it. other thing you come away with is, and this is something that is super fascinating to me, is how we keep, you know, history really teaches us and we keep going through similar experiences and we can see now what we're going through through a lens of 1940, 41, mm. and how mm -hmm. similar it is as we look at what's happening today. Why didn't he pull this play out and have it produced? I mean, if it's a good play, why did it have to be only kind of like a, the message? I, I, I well, I think he probably pulled another play out. Yeah, because yeah, he, he, he was, yeah. uh, he, he, it was incredible. Yeah. Because I said to him when I was talking about his writing, I said, and, and you went in after the coffee and you started working, because then he started typing, he told me, he, after he, finish this scroll, but uh, uh, he didn't do that anymore. But he said, uh, sometimes I'd go and I'd sit there and it wouldn't come. And I would, I had a thing that I would do, I would sit at the, at my desk until two o'clock mm. when I had my lunch. And then the rest of the day was for me. I could do anything I wanted. But he said, uh, some days nothing came. I would just stare either at the typewriter or at the pencils or whatever. But, and then other days, 
it just it flowed just, like crazy. And I said, well, a lot of it flowed <laughs> Cause, it's, it's, because yeah. what he, you know, he wrote so many plays. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just had uh, Stephen Adley Gurgis on the playwright and he said uh, the, the key to being a writer is you have to get yourself to the table and stay there. Right? That's right. Yeah. That's well, very also true, Coward I think. Coward is famously known for writing these brilliant plays in the incredibly short period of time. Mm. That's right. I mean, Hay Fever he wrote in over a weekend, I yes, think. And right. So have you got a, a stack of of Noel Coward plays yeah. that are going to be produced by you guys? <laughs> well, as long as the Noel Coward Foundation keeps sending them to us. <laughs> right. <laughs> and during, there. during the, uh, um, the, the British, when Br Britain was involved in the war, he decided he wasn't going to write a play for a year. He said, uh, I just, I, I'm going to do other things. I mean, he entertained the troops. Uh, and he made uh, one of the greatest war films of all time in right. which we served. That's right. That's where he right. played Mountbatten. Yeah. And also he wrote Blight but, Spirit during the uh, war. But <laughs> after <laughs> a year, <laughs> he said, I don't know, he was somewhere with his good friend Joyce Carey, and uh, I think in Australia, and suddenly he thought about this play. And... Uh, he wrote it in six play, uh, six days. Of course, the present laughter was the same. Right. Yes. That, yes, he, I think he, so. That was done, and they he stopped it because it was the war started, ah. you know, and it was not. Mm -hmm. That's right. The right time. It, it wasn't the right time, and yeah. he didn't want that to be the play to start the with the war. Right. Yeah, because right. it was again a smaller play, you know, smaller in scope with mm -hmm. the. Right. Uh, Alaska was very interesting to me because he was the artist surrounded by all these people that one person couldn't talk to him alone. We have one minute left, Donna. Oh, well, I understand that he and Churchill butted heads. Is that true? I, well, that's, that's what, that's what I, the research I've I've been told that, that. Yeah. I mean, I've been told that by Didn't Noel. You, by Noel, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's Which a pretty the good better, source. The better source, yes. <laughs> and, uh, well, let's tell the story about the, the we've uh, talked about, about the knighthood. If you want. Oh, yes. That uh, he, well, there was a, when he was a spy, he was supposed to go get this high level uh, assignment, and evidently the word came down from Churchill that no, we were not going to use Noel. Yeah, he didn't. All right, well, the time has flown. Yeah, absolutely. But, what, but November 13th? November 13th at the Scholastic Theater, and we have an amazing cast, including Christine, but Chris, uh, Jennifer Ely. Reed Burney, Cynthia Harris, Simon Jones, Peter Bartlett, Lorenzo Pisoni. It's heaven. And an Chris amazing Lee Wilson. Wilson. Heaven. Yes. All it's a star. great cast. Yeah. And yeah, it's a fantastic cast. Yes. A, another <laughs> production of at the Wonderful Tact of the Wonderful Tact Theater Company. Yes. So thank you so much, thank Scott you. Allen Evans. Thank you so much, Christine <laughs> Nielsen. Thank you so much, Jeffrey Johnson. All right. Thank you, Donna Hanover. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>